Jeff Rutledge, welcome back to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I hope you're doing well. Doing well, thank you. How are you? Hey, very good. Very good. I'm looking forward to this conversation and uh, talking a little Alabama football with you. Let's start back at that 1978 uh, season. You were a part of a lot of success here. I'm just curious if there was anything that you really noticed special about that 78 team. Well, I mean, we just, we were a good, you know, close group of guys. I mean, we knew we had a good football team coming into that year. The year before, we had a chance to, you know, to win it. I think we ended up two. And uh, so we knew going into that year, we were going to have a great chance of winning it. And, we, you know, we just, uh, we played well together. And, you know, good group of guys, real good group of guys. Let me, let me get into a, a little bit of a conversation and looking at the dynasty that you guys were part of there in the 70s. How comparable is that to the current day dynasty that's happening here in Tuscaloosa? I don't know if you can say you're talking different athletes, different coaches, different everything. But I certainly know the tradition uh, of Alabama football hasn't, I don't think, changed. Because I know back in those days in the, in the 70s, you know, everybody expected Alabama to be there at the end, you know, fight for a national championship. And, then, and that's where it is right now. Again, you know, Coach Saban has done a fantastic job of getting football back. Uh, where it was back in the 70s and you know and every year they're fighting uh, for a national championship and that's that's what we expected you know, that's why you go to Alabama is to, to have that chance to, to win a national championship and, and not everybody that goes and plays college football has that opportunity but when you look at it, it was that ever too much pressure when you talk about winning a championship is successful if you don't win a championship it's not successful uh, did, did that pressure ever get to you as being the quarterback at Alabama no I mean, I, I, if you don't like that pressure, if you don't want that, you know, and I don't look at it as pressure, you know, you know, I was a tight guy. I wanted to make that throw. I wanted to make that read. I, you know, don't want to do that. If you don't want that pressure, then, <laughs> then I, you know, you're the wrong guy. I mean, especially the quarterback position. You, you got to have that guy that wants the ball and wants to have a chance every year to, to have to make that play and to, and to have a chance to win an after championship. That's, that's the part I loved about it. When you look back at that roster of 1978, and and certainly it's the, it applies to today's standards as well. Was practice Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday harder than Saturday afternoon? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I thought so. I mean, you, you practiced all week to get to Saturday, and and, and it was, uh, and especially back, you know, when I played my brother play, you know, we ran the wishbone, and so you couldn't. It was sort of have hard to have walkthroughs and half speed practices on the offensive side when you ran the wishbone. You had to get the true reads, you know, from the defensive ends and tackles, and you had to go full speed. And and the, op- the offense we ran um, was hard to you know simulate if you didn't go full speed with it. So, uh, but definitely practices during the week I felt were were always tougher, and, and you look forward to game week. And, uh, what game weekend? And, uh, and it was no different when you got to pro football. Heck, I played with Joe Gibbs, Parcells, and I remember Lyman all the time talking about what I felt like I had to play the game. You know, and here it is Tuesday, or here it is Wednesday. Uh, that's that's what good teams would do. That's what championship teams do. Is uh, you're going to be, you know, how you practice is the way you're going to play. I, I know that saying has been around a long time, but it's so true. When you look back at the 1978 game, is there a game, in your opinion, that sticks out, that maybe just a moment that uh, you can share with us? Uh, they all stick out, obviously. You know, you, the national championship game, you know, go line stand, you know, that sticks out. But, you know, I remember, you know, I made my share of mistakes, and then I remember hitting Bruce Bolton on the post pattern right before the halftime. That, you know, that was big. Uh, the Auburn game, obviously, always at the end of the year and playing those guys and bragging rights for a year. Uh, but that was a special year. You know, we had come off, like I said, that junior year, you thought we had a chance to win it. Then, you know, we beat Ohio State Sugar Bowl so convincingly, and then we, we don't get it. And going into that next year, you know, that was what was on our mind. And, you know, you take them one, you know, Coach Brown was always, you take them one week at a time. I don't care how good a team you're playing or how week of the team you're playing. I can, I, can, I can remember Coach Brian, and I can't exactly remember who we play. I want to say it was PTU, somebody that we should have beaten uh, very easily. And, you know, and we beat them, but we struggled because we knew we basically felt like we just had to show up. And, you know, I remember him coming in after the game and said, I'll see everybody on the field dressed and ready to go tomorrow morning. So we got out and practice on Sunday morning. And 
So that, that's what, you know, good coaches do. You know, and Coach Brian knew we didn't play well. Okay, guys, you know, told you it was going to be a fight if we didn't take them seriously, and we didn't. And, then we, you know, we were after practicing <laughs> the next morning. But that's, but that's what you expected. You go to Alabama, that's why I went there. You want, you know, Coach Brian was always great about getting the best out of his players. And if you didn't, or if you didn't want to do it to his way, then, you know, you didn't get a lot of playing time. What is one characteristic that you think that Coach Saban and, and, and Coach Bryant have in common? I think they get the most out of their players. Um, you know, coaches are not always the most liked guys at times, uh, especially when they're on you, when they're holding you accountable. Uh, I know in just in coaching today, the high school kids that I coach, that kids don't like to be held accountable. And I'm, you know, with work ethic, I think that's what both Coach Bryant I know and, and Coach Saban, I don't know him personally, but I've, I've heard. I mean, story. I mean, he gets the best out of his player, but he's not going to settle for anything but your best. Uh, and if you're giving, you're willing to give your best, then you're going to be successful. And you know, and it, it doesn't always come out. And I, I believe in, in wins and losses, but they certainly have with without with Coach Brian and Coach Saban. But in life, I mean, if you're willing to outwork people, you're going to be successful because there's a lot of people that aren't willing to outwork you in, in the job force and in the real world. And that's that's what I to take from Coach Bryant that hey, don't let anybody outwork you. You know, go out there and, and give it everything you got. What God's blessed you with from a talent standpoint, go out there and, and give it every time you go out. And and that's all you could do. We were talking about a couple of minutes ago and, and we were looking at the rivalries between Alabama and Auburn and Alabama and Tennessee. I, I'm curious, uh, could you help us understand the way that Coach Bryant treated the Tennessee rivalry? Well, the, the, the Tennessee rivalry was more Coach Goose Street, I think. Uh, okay. You know, Coach Goose Street, Coach Donahue, when I was there, I mean, you know, that was the big one, uh, the Tennessee game. But but they were all important. You know, yes, that was Tennessee. Yes, it was Auburn. But each week, was that was the game we're playing. That's the most important. You can't look to the Tennessee. You can't look to the Auburn. They're down the road. You take one inch at a time. But those games certainly uh, was Tennessee being close to Tuscaloosa, obviously Auburn being in the same state. Uh, you know, those games were the ones that meant the most because those, those were bragging rights for a year. When we look at uh, the, the game, I want to go back to September the 23rd. It was the third game of the season. Uh, it was a loss for the Crimson Tide against USC. and, and then But then you guys bounced back and, and, and played great football, for seemed like, from there on. Uh, go back to that loss and maybe how that helped define that season. Well, gosh, I, I, I'm getting old because I feel like I'm trying to think. Who did we lose to the first game year? I yeah, know. Well, it was the first first game you, you guys were able to beat Nebraska 20 to 3, 38 to 20 the next game against Missouri, and then number seven, USC, was in Birmingham. And uh, the, the Right. And, top- I, and I remember that now. I just remember going into that season, I had some five interceptions against Nebraska the year before. And so then we opened up with them, and I was. You know, fortunately, I didn't throw any more the rest of that year and then going into the next year and then being able to beat Nebraska since we've gotten beat by the year before. But, uh, you know, the USC game, you know, we didn't You give USC credit. I mean, they came to our place and, and, and they beat us. And uh, But, you know, what do you do after a loss? How do you respond? And we obviously responded and said, hey, you know, we didn't, we didn't win, but you can go back and you win a national championship with one loss. It certainly, you know, convinced ourselves that we could still have a chance to win it and, and and we worked that way. And and that's the thing nowadays, you know, you see it every year. I mean very rarely a team goes undefeated. And uh so you can just get to one loss and get and and, and, and get a chance to play the right teams. I know there's a lot of luck involved in that be able to get to play the teams you have to play. But you know, back when I played, I mean we had our schedule set and it was basically at the end of the year I have a how the polls gonna vote you. But uh it was more important if you were going to lose, lose early. You know, don't don't lose toward the end. And uh, we were just fortunate, you know. But like I said, we, you know, in the U.S. League, was a good football team. I think it was Paul McDonald. When Paul McDonald was their quarterback, I remember that. A left-hander that they had. Uh, and and they, we didn't play well. We didn't play well. But we, we certainly bounced back from it. Yeah, Paul McDonald threw for, uh, I think it was 200-something yards in that game. But uh, Yep. You, you look at that game uh, just for a couple of minutes, or you, or you look at that schedule. I mean, I was just looking at the schedule. I mean, you, you're talking about a, a, a difficult schedule that Alabama fans talk about now. <laughs> you guys started out number 10 against Nebraska, 11 Missouri, 
number seven USC, Vanderbilt. Then you went to Washington. Uh, I believe Don James was the guy there. Yep. Uh, was Warren Moon the quarterback there at Washington in 78? It could have been, or it may have been somebody. I just remember we practiced all week, you know, inspecting rain. And, you know, we had the bucket of water out there. Every snap I took that whole week for three or four days was water. And then we went out to Washington, and it was probably the prettiest game of the year, weather-wise. I mean, when the clouds got, but we <laughs> lucked out. But, but we were playing a good football team out there. Yeah, but going And that was the thing back then. You had to schedule. I, I said you had to. To win a national championship, they were going to go by your strength of schedule. They were going to look at what are your non-conference games. You know, and you just mentioned, you, you know, you had Nebraska as a non-conference game. You had Missouri at that time. We wasn't in the SEC as a non-conference game. You had Washington. I mean, you had all those teams that weren't, who were out of conference. It wasn't playing somebody where you know you're going to win by 50 points. I mean, the, the best way, that's what you wanted. You go to Alabama to be the best. You to be the best, you got to play the best. And then when you win, you say, we played the best, and we, we came out with the best team. Yeah, and you even played Virginia Tech uh, there as as far as, uh, you know, a, a name that's got a lot of brand. I mean, I mean, so I was looking at the schedule, and I was going through, and I'm like, man, I mean, you guys had to really get the job done when you talk about the strength of schedule. Uh, I'm curious from a quarterback perspective, when you look at kids coming out now in high school and they're making a quicker impact, or at least, uh, you know, you see guys starting as a freshman, like Jalen Hurts did last year. Uh, you've got other quarterbacks that come in early. Help us contribute that back to high school coaches and how they, they're they preparing these kids. Well, I think high school coaches are doing better, especially with the big programs of, of preparing kids from high school. But, but, you know, and I coach high school now, you know, and I don't have to, you know, I'm in a very small school out here in Arizona, so I don't really have kids going to the next level. But I know, you know, the kids that are going to Alabama, you know, all the big schools, you know, they're playing, definitely playing uh, for some great programs, and the coaches are obviously doing, you know, a great you know, a great job with them. It's, you know, it's, it's, you know, but in high school, you know, coaching is certainly huge when it comes, you know, I know Devin Hurts, he had to be ready when he got to Alabama. It's hard, especially as quarterback, to come in and play as a freshman. And what he did last year was simply amazing, and he ended up to get better. But, but hey, you got to, you know, get this high school coaches, you know, the praise for that. But so much of it is, you know, is, is, right, what's the kid willing to do? How much work is he willing to put in? I mean, that's, I, I see it more than ever now being in high school. It's, it's very rarely, in a lot of cases, the kids work as hard. I don't think kids work as hard as what I know I used to work uh, back at that age group. You know, my brother, you, we all work summer jobs. You know, I don't know. If it's, no, I, know we, I don't Arizona think it's now. even possible now. It's... I mean, and you know, but, he, but he, it's, it's what you want to do. Okay, I, you know, I knew if I was going to have any money, I had to work during the week. But all our, you know, I went to Bank High School. It was a heck of a high school. And the heck, you know, I think we had six kids that senior year signing the SEC. And we all had summer jobs. I mean, we would all just be down to school at 5 o'clock. We're going to run. We're going to throw. We're going to lift. And we did that five days a week. And, uh, and and we certainly, you know, Coach White was our coach, you know, who coached Alabama and with us. And, and so... Work ethic that he instilled, and so then you go into that. So I looked at my high school coach; he definitely prepared me uh, for college football because I know what I went through. I I mean, Coach White was tough, you know. But we won. You wanted to win. You wanted to play for him. And then, so when I went to Alabama, I this was already instilled in me, and I think that's what you, like you just mentioned. I think that's what a lot of these high school coaches are doing. They're getting they, the programs in high school are getting tougher and tougher. It was they were way uh kids are coming out. Uh, prepared. I'm just curious, what do you do with all the jewelry? Because you know you won back to back state titles uh, in high school. You won national titles, multiple national titles here. Uh, when you look at the University of Alabama, I mean, do you uh, uh, do you have a perfect display <laughs> for all the rings and and the championships? I, do. I actually do. I have. I, I, I should know the term. I don't. It's a shadow back something that I've got a box and all my rings are lined up in, and and uh, so uh, you know, very rarely wear them but i do look at them almost every day because what i have them and you know those are great memories you know memories uh last a lifetime and you know and it started heck when i was 10 years old started playing football and just been very fortunate all the programs i was able to be a part of won championships and but with all of them whether in high school college and pro there was a lot of work that was put into it and the other day time i said kids are willing to work and that's Forget sports. If you're just willing to work hard, and if you're willing to work harder than the other guy, you're going to be successful. 
uh, because you've got that work ethic, and that's that's what kids have to have. And or anybody to be successful in anything they do, they've got to be willing to work hard. I'm just curious when you get your players there at Valley Christian High School uh, there in Chandler, Arizona. When you get your your players around you, what is that one memory that you share of Coach Bryant to help us preserve that legacy? Well, I tell them, you know, Coach Bryant was always huge about not getting penalties, you know, in, in games, and he and he hated personal fouls. You know, you take, you know, you get under the pile, somebody grabs you or calls you a name, you get up swinging, and they throw a penalty, and you just kind of got your team penalized, takes you back. He takes you out of the game. You know, and, and he would say it takes more of a man to walk away from a fight than it does to stand there and fight. And which is so true when you're on a football field. The hard thing to do is to walk away. The easy thing to do is swing back, talk back. And then he'd say, All right, now put yourself out on a weekend and you're with a bunch of guys doing the wrong thing. It takes more of a man to walk away and go home than it does to stand there and give into it. And you know, that's what my parents taught me about doing the right thing, being at the right place. But, you know, the kids and people you knew, you know, it's not always going to happen. So that's what I always tell that story. I'll talk about it. it takes more of a man to walk away than it does to stand there and fight or give in to the pressures that are going on. And that's I say that almost daily to my kids because it's so true. You know, it's the temptations, the pressure to, to, to hang with the crowd to do the, the wrong thing, it, 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 that's real. That's life. It takes more of a man to do the right thing than it does to give in and do the wrong thing. Wow. Great, great advice, uh, even, even away from the football field. Uh, Jeff Rutledge, thank you again for spending a couple of minutes with us and helping us honor that 1978 team. It's a great one in Alabama history, and uh, you know we, we always like to go back and, and, and show the foundation, the way that Alabama well, football fun. was built. I promise it's fun for us as players to look back and think back. Uh, because if we get older, our memories tend to start fading a little bit, but it's, those are great memories to look back on. And gosh, it, it, even though it seems like a long time ago, it, it really wasn't. And uh, that's the fun part.